give them the data, they will be better learners, always. We spend a lot of time trying to get the noise down, you know, be quiet, be quiet, you know, fingers on lips, you know, whatever. Um, and children are bubbly and noisy, but they know that when they're too noisy, it's hard to learn. So when we take a, a piece of technology, a phone or a tablet, and we put a decibel meter on it and we put it on the wall, and then you and you are in charge of noise today, if the class is a little noisy, you and you will go off and sort of shush, shush, everybody be quiet. You know? And if the class is quiet, quieter for the morning, maybe we go to lunch five minutes earlier, you know, because we've been working hard, you know. So they, they are perfectly capable of making their own learning better because we've given them technology and we give them data. In the 1950s, I'd have just said, you're too loud. Now I can say, you're 78 decibels, and that's worse than yesterday, and the loudest class in the school. So I've got, you know, I've got a lot of information. They will respond to information. It's very unfair because if I'm sitting on that side of the class in good light, but you're sitting on that side of the class in dark light, your results will be worse than the person over there. So, you know, there's no level playing field. The light level has to be constant. The temperature has to be constant. The oxygen has to, but it's not expensive to fix. If you have 30 children in a room and the CO2 level is too high, if they all bring in a plant each, the CO2 level will be fine and we don't need you know, expensive oxygen generating equipment. We just need a plant each. And of course, when they bring the plant, then they have a friend, they give the plant a name, they think about photosynthesis and they, they do some science, they try different nutrients on the plant. They get a lot from their plant, but mostly they get better learning and their brains work better. Trust them to make, to bring in the plants and change the light bulbs, paint the walls white. And take their shoes off. I mean, it's a, a bizarre thing. I have, I have no idea why this works, but if you take your shoes off in a classroom, it turns out to be quite hard to be naughty. Uh, you know, and uh, the data is very clear, you know, and kids take their shoes off. There's less bullying, there's less naughtiness. I have no idea how it works. In China, they say it's reflexology, you know. In India, they say it's respect, you take your shoes off. But in Spain, I it, it works everywhere, and I don't know. So sometimes we know what works, but we don't know why. But let's still do it, hey, you know. <laughs> People talk a lot about the changing role of the teacher. You, What's that horrid phrase they say, you're going to be the guide on the side and not the stage. On the... It's way more complicated than that, you know. The best teachers make their children want to learn. The best teachers say, oh, this like chemistry is brilliant, you know. And they're the eccentrically excited about it. Or they're mad about mathematics, you know. And, and kids want to learn. And of course, the best teachers know their stuff. Because, you know, if you're trying to, you're trying to program your robot to go in a triangle, and you, you say, OK, I'm going to go forward, turn through 60 degrees, I'm going to do that three times. And then when you do it, it goes off, you know, what's happened? I need a teacher to come and say, oh, well, a triangle has an inside angle and an outside angle. You need to turn through 120 degrees to get the triangle. So if the teacher doesn't know their stuff, you know, who is going to help you? But the, the main thing a teacher has to do is love learning, love their subject and be a little crazy. It's enough. <laughs> We've just reached the point when education can't hold all the technology and control it. I mean, children bring their own phones to school in, in many countries, or they bring their own uh, music, or they bring their own, uh, you know, I had a pair of Google Glass, you know, it's great, you know, information in your eyes. You know. So we're just reaching a point when the technology belongs to the child and not to the institution. That's a very important point, because the second thing that happens is the technology is now so powerful that instead of saying, how can I use it to do what we used to do before better, now I say, how can I use it to do something I could never do at all before? And that's a much more interesting challenge. You know, three and four-year-old children are on the beach with the digital microscope looking at the sand. Well, 
you know, here's a three-year-old looking at the sand, and she says, there's a little red dot in the sand, what's that? And I say, well, it's bits of plastic because of the pollution in the, in the planet. She well, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> so a child of three years old with a digital microscope realising about pollution on the planet today could not have happened 20 years ago. So what are the other things we can do? And that's a big challenge for us, I think. So some teachers will say, OK, get your phones out. Let's do some, some measuring. Let's do some geometry. Let's do some art. Others will say, put the phones away. That's OK. You know, we want teachers to be themselves. But if they all say, put the technology away, or they all say, turn the technology off, then it's time to change school because you don't want to stay there. You know? The divide is between passivity and activity. If I'm just watching and consuming, I'm pretty helpless in this world. If I'm making and creating, then I'm in a position to make a judgment about other people and what they've made, and we need children who can make those judgments. So this isn't about how long do you look at your phone or how long do you look through your glasses, because they, be, they will be a screen as well. So, you know, shut your eyes. You've seen too much of the world. It's not going to happen. So it's not about screen time. It's about activity versus passivity. And kids are pretty good at being active, you know. If you look around Europe, you look around uh, Australia, New Zealand, you look around most of the world, you'll see people building bigger spaces, but they're, they're not like the big barns they built in the 1960s. You know, they've got nooks, corners, little rooms off, and they're quite complex spaces, and you can use them any way you like. So you can still do direct instruction, like the whole class, and you know, I'm explaining something, or you, know, you might want to go off into a corner, do some research or some quiet collaboration. They've got zones, so the, today's rooms, I think, are getting bigger, They've got softer and lower walls or no walls. They've got a bigger mixture of children in them. The children's behavior is better usually when we measure the sound. They're quieter in the big space than the little space, uh, unexpectedly. <laughs> and um, they often have two or three teachers in them. Because it's quite hard to be a teacher on your own. You only ever see yourself teaching. You don't, you don't learn much. But I mean, when I'm teaching your teacher, that's a really, she's tried, she's tried a really good idea, you know, you, I'll try that tomorrow. So we, we learn by watching each other. Well, the only time we do that is when we're teaching together. So the bigger spaces, we share our teaching and we, we move forward together. If I look at children learning in their, in their family, in their sports clubs, in their, uh, in their churches, in their, their orchestras, you know, what I see are young children chasing after the role model of the older children. I want to be like my big sister. I want to be better, better than my big sister. And the big kids are saying, I need to, I need to go fast because they're catching me up. You know? Something about that mixed age that's really effective. In schools, we say, you, you can't do this till next year <laughs> because this is for the 14-year-olds and you're 13, you know? which is ridiculous. It's quite ridiculous. So we spend a lot of time putting a break on children now are teachers it's not their fault they often say you, you'll remember you'll remember your teacher saying to you you're not supposed to know this yet but i'll tell you anyway you know it's a secret you know so your teachers love you to be excited by the learning but the system the curriculum the year groups the structure all keep stopping children it's as though they're running down the corridor and they keep arriving at a door that's locked and then they all have to wait and then the door's open. They run again. Well, we just need to open the doors and let them go. They need knowledge, they need detailed, deep understanding, but they don't need limits on how far they can go.